Hello and welcome to the Pirates Fan Forum here on DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. I'm your host, Gary Morgan. With me, as always, my good friend, Jim Stam. How you doing, brother? Good, man. It's March. It's March Madness. Um, the Pirates are going to be playing next week. Those games are going to count. We've got the Jaggies coming up uh, this weekend. If you want to check those out, the top 10 worst Pittsburgh sports accounts. So, yeah, man, this is, this is a good good time of year i can't wait for the jaggies it's my favorite time of the year <laughs> um duquesne made us proud today already advancing to the round of 32 in the ncaa um meant marked madness i'm super excited yeah. about that good for them Very repping cool. pittsburgh first Love time it. in f- 55 years they have yeah. won so Pretty very cool. crazy so um we're next time we record a show we decided we're going to do it at like nine o'clock next thursday right Right, because the Pirates are playing their opener, and we yeah. want everybody to enjoy it. We want to enjoy it, hopefully. Yep. And then we'll jump on, what we say, 9 o'clock we're going to do? Yeah, about 9 o'clock we're going to jump on, so that'll help out our West Coast people. We promised we would try to do some more of that stuff anyway, so that's good. Yeah. All that said, it's kind of forcing us to do our season preview a little early, right? We're a like little a bit. A week early. That said, when you do a season preview, Jim, you're not talking about like who they start with. You're talking about what you think is going to happen over 162 games. So you're already full of crap as soon as you're trying to get past April, right? <laughs> so De- definitely, yeah. I mean, we can we can get away with it a little bit. This is uh, we're what I mean. They're gonna they they're gonna know here real soon if they don't pretty much already, right? So we're probably not going to be like predicting the roster so much as um, maybe we'll just talk about the fringes that are left open, you know, to interpretation a little bit, like those last couple reliever spots, that last r- rotation spot that we think is available, maybe last two, I guess we could even discuss. Um, we got to start with injury news, though. Um, Carvin Majinski showed up today on the injury report. Um and I hadn't heard too much of anything about him. Um, I certainly didn't hear it was forearm strain. I just missed it, apparently, because other people said they had heard it. I hadn't seen it until today. Uh, you hear forearm strain. That gets you all kinds of nervous, though. Yeah, but he's going back out the throw and already has. So apparently it was just precautionary in this instance, and that's good. Um, that's a guy I don't think they can afford to lose. That said maybe he's a guy that you potentially don't see start with the team that we thought for sure would. So I'm not sure how they'll play that. I would think they, they might want to use one of his options and, and, you know, let him start in the minors and make sure he's right. Well, that's, what's interesting about this is we've got a couple guys here and there that might not, that are probably in the plans, but maybe aren't ready for opening day. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll sift through it as best we can. Right. Um, I guess David Bednar is even, um, starting tonight. going to see Kutch in the outfield, see Michael A. Taylor play for the first time. So I think most of the pieces are there, certainly enough for us to make the broad strokes predictions we're going to look to make today. Right. So, um, we'll talk about some of those position battles as we go. I guess the first one that we should tackle, though, is probably the toughest. Second base. I think we've been putting it off forever now. Who do you think's won that position? Do you think anybody's won that position? Um, probably not. I I see it more as by default. Um, not that not that Pagero's had a bad spring. Right. Um, Triola looks looks fine too. Bay's not even been in the pitcher. Um, so I don't know. has actually had a pretty okay spring too. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think he was going to have to out hit everybody though. And, um, that, that, that hasn't happened. So I think it's just, I think it's going to be Pagero, but I don't know that we'll see Pagero just every day out there. I think they might, I think they might finesse that a little bit. 
Yeah, I think somebody asked me the other day who's starting at second, like Triolo or, or Peggy. And I was like, let me put it this way. I think they'll both have roughly the same amount of at-bats. And I don't necessarily think that means anything about where they play. I just think that Triolo will bounce around enough and play enough second base that he'll get the same amount of at-bats as Pagaro does. And and if one of them shows that they straight up fit and the other one doesn't, we'll see them transition into like more of a starting role for somebody. I think this this battle kind of continues as the season goes on, but I think they're both on the team, don't you? I do, and the more I look at it with Triolo, um, the conversations of him might not being on the roster that some had had earlier is kind of silly. You look at him, he's so he's so valuable for what he can do. You start thinking about it like he can play a lot of second base if they need him to, and then he can bounce around. He can get a lot of at-bats this year, Gary. He really could. Right. And uh, what I'm trying to do here is lay the base for like the, the roster so that when we start talking about our predictions, we kind of know who we're talking about. So, okay. Because <laughs> otherwise, we're going to make some guesses about people that we didn't even say were going to be on the team. So, we kind of have to do that a little uh-huh. bit. Um, starting rotation. This is where you and I are probably going to have a conversation that stretches beyond this first segment, but it's something that I think we have to start with. Um, I think Gonzalez, despite last night's performance, is safe. Um, I, I would also say if you're basing your thoughts on Gonzalez on what you saw on TV last night, you're probably missing out on what you didn't see last Thursday when he went five innings against the Orioles A squad and only gave up one run and looked really, really sharp the whole game. So like Yeah. It, it's, it's very probably it's very, unfair to cherry pick, you know. It's very hard sometimes with guys that are, are now considered veterans too. You like you just don't know exactly what they're trying to get accomplished. And um unfortunately or fortunately you kind of got to let it see how it plays out at the start of the year. Right. You got Martin Perez. He's looked great. I mean, great. Like 2022 Martin Perez is what we've seen so far. Maybe even a touch better because I've never seen him have this kind of pinpoint control of his cutter. It's uh he's a pretty sick pitcher if that's all working for him. So yeah, you know, definitely. Maybe they accidentally got their number two. Um, you know what I mean? And well, Mitch Keller hasn't looked great, but he's for sure in it. So those mm-hmm. three are the locks, right? Yeah. Yeah, and and then you've got a situation with Contreras hasn't looked good. Uh Ortiz has been up and down with his control. Um Priester, eh, he's looking like there's some steps, but could you really do you really want to depend on him right away? I I don't think that stuff has shaken out like they had hoped it would have. Well, and we gotta get to um Bailey Falter because Wilbert Matthews is super excited about seeing him pitch again tonight. <laughs> so uh he wants us to help him understand why they're trotting Falter out again. Because it's spring, Wilbert, it's spring, that's why. Um and there's really no reason not to at this point. You don't want to kill anybody else or take anybody else off schedule. So that's the way it is. Yeah, take you got quick, him. You got let's him. take that quick well break, Jim. Let's come back and let's hit it up. Let's let's figure out who's in our rotation, okay? All right. Yep. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores, track the latest stats, chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. All right, welcome back to the Pirates Fan Forum here on DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. We talked about the three that are for sure in there. It's time for that fourth and fifth. I think Ortiz is in it. I think he's done enough. And I know you referenced the control issues, but I also don't think those control issues are going to go away for Ortiz. No. And I don't think he has anything to learn at AAA. He can throw absolute crap and strike everyone out in, in AAA. There's nothing left to learn there. To me, 
he's a bullpen arm, he's in the rotation, or he doesn't have really a role. So I think he's in it. I do too. I, I am I am fully on board with seeing him in the starting rotation at this point. Um, like you said, in the minors, what are you sending him back to work on? Yeah, I, I would agree. And I think he's also more primed to, to provide innings this year than a lot of the other youngsters. He's more built up than the rest of them. So I think it makes sense to start him out like with the big club and potentially transition him to the bullpen later on if they want to. The next one is tough because, you know, by performance, I want Jared Jones. I think he's been the best. I know you do too. That shouldn't surprise us, anybody, that we want the best guy. I mean, I think he's shown the best. I put a lot of work into trying to break down exactly how many innings I think he could go this year. I really believe it's going to be somewhere around 150, 155. That's not a full season. It won't ever be a full season. They're going to have to baby his arm somehow, some way. So if he starts up here, I could easily see like a mid-season demotion, you know, that will be very unpopular, but I think it'll be like to shut him down for a couple weeks and build him back up slowly and hopefully have him down the stretch instead of, just have to shut them down altogether at some point. Yeah. And I think when we discuss, if we get to it, some of the relievers you might want to keep, you could kind of think about some of those guys that can pitch more than one inning to maybe help out in that role. If you do decide to go with, with Jones in there. Yeah. That's the way I would go. I, and I actually think that for better or worse, I actually think they're considering it. I, I think to still have him here and be trotting him out on Saturday for another start. You're if you're not really in a competition, they're not letting you pitch this close to the season. I mean, I I truly believe that um they're thinking about it long and hard. Because honestly, cuz at this point like with Rowanzi, I just don't think you could even remotely consider putting him in a starting rotation. I know he's out of options. I think you try to give him one more shot in the bullpen, even though that creates some issues. It's just the last gasp effort to try to get it by some a little bit of time, Gary. Well, if they don't go with Jones, who do they go with? Because I don't think Quinn Priester has 100% proven he belongs, but out of the youngsters, he's the next. That, that has shown that he should get a shot at least, right? You could probably go with a Chase Anderson type. They've got to make a decision on him here in two days as to whether yeah. they're going to keep him or not. Eric Lauer's fine going to the minors and at some point could work in. Way too early to be worrying about German. He's not going to be coming up right away. Um, Rowanzi, I think, again, like you said, not even in this picture. In fact, if you if you want to skip ahead a bit, I'm not even putting him in my bullpen. I'm straight up done. Like if it's if it's not good enough to even put in this bullpen, I, I just don't even know what you're doing. DFA him, see if you can get him through. Yeah, you're taking a risk, but you can't keep everybody. I'm sorry, you just can't. <laughs> I don't. I the only reason I say try it that way at first is because I don't think he will make it through waivers at all. Um, I think he'll be gone pretty quick so um anderson to me is an interesting uh person just because he's pitched well but he's not a young guy he hasn't been very good for four years in baseball I, he has an opt-out left or he has an opt-out um i i'd be okay with losing him uh if if it comes down to it i'd be okay with losing him too i don't think that I don't think that you're desperate enough to to put him in as a starting pitcher or even in the bullpen necessarily. I, if anything, I could see him in the bullpen with with the the Majinski potentially starting on on the IL. The news about Moretta having TJ. I mean, we already knew he was going to be out for a good stretch at least, but you know now that's confirmed. Mm-hmm. You know the bullpen and David Bednar. He start. He's going to pitch tonight, but is he going to be ready? I don't know. 
you know, <laughs> like maybe you want to keep somebody like that around. It's and that's like, why, that's yeah. why I think guys like Peralta and Honeywell are, are pretty important this year um, to start the season off. I think they're both, I think Gary, they're both going to make the team. I, 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 I think they're versatile guys. They can give you more than an inning. Peralta pretty much done everything and they've both looked pretty good. Yeah, they have. Um, it's it's going to be tough because you can't just go around like tossing forty man spots out the window either. You know, like I know Bailey Falter is a pretty easy cut that a lot of people are going to make. Um, there's every possibility he'll come out and shove tonight. By the way, just because. Um, uh. <laughs> but you know, I'm right. You know, it happens every time. Well, but well, two starts ago, he looked really good. It's up to them to make the right call here, but. I don't see a bullpen future for him. Um, I would understand wanting to ride him a little bit, like if you just wanted to get some innings out of a guy and, and you know, you were really strong one through four and it's just like an extra guy that you wanted to shove out there and have eat 50, 60 innings for you before you jettison them off and move up that prospect that's ready like Jones, right? But I think they have better options than him for that. So I don't know. I, I that's where I come down on. Like I don't see a role for him. Falter's the guy that we would be ha- making this argument for two years ago. Yeah, in my opinion, you're very right. How, and and, and to a degree, and... to a degree, Rowanzi is too. We've seen Rowanzi look really good two years ago. Now, if we signed a guy like that and he and brought him in as an NRI, and he performed like this in the spring. Would we, would we be even considering keeping him? No, at all. No, but in any no, way, not at all. But I will try to be on, stay on the other side of it too. In the interest of, we just saw everything that Keller went through in his career and progression and ups and downs. So I, I, I fully, fully agree with you. I'm also just trying to keep that in mind, where it's like. Man, do you do you really want to pull the 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 cord on that? I guess with Keller, I always felt it was more about lacking the courage to throw certain pitches. You know what I mean? I really felt like it just wasn't that part was missing for him. He just wasn't gonna throw some of the things he needed to. He didn't trust his stuff in the zone. Rowanzi can't hit the zone. And that is his problem. Sure. I don't know how you fix that. And I also think at this stage with what you have coming, let's say that you're right. And Rowanzi is going to find it somewhere. Someone's going to fix him. I think we're all dreaming that that's a light switch. Somebody's going to flip. I don't think so. I think this is a guy that needs broken down and reconstructed. Okay. So I think you're talking about like a year or two. Let's say that that's in the cards and the pirates could do it. You get, are you going to crip along with him like in your bullpen for a year when you're supposed to be competing? You're not. You're not going to give him a full year. He's going to get a month to figure it out. Yeah, so and by the you're way. You're saving it off for a month. And by the way, I'm not sure that it's fixable. Um, that's not my uh, Point argument. being, let's say it is, though. With what the Pirates have coming, by the time it's fixed, you don't need him. You get what I mean? <laughs> like, oh yeah. Listen, I think. I, listen, I don't think there's anybody wrong necessarily talking about Rohanzi. I hate tough. to say it because the kid was super impressive, but like, at some point you do have to cut bait. If this were Keller now, going through that, ain't no way he gets three or four years to figure it out. We talked about that before, like how fortunate he was that he came up when he did. Because the team could afford to be patient. They weren't trying to win. He had a lot of talent and a big arm. They thought, if we keep working with him, we'll figure it out. Well, maybe if that was Rwanzi's situation and he had the option bank that Keller had, they could work through it. But now, I'm looking at a guy like Jared Jones that hasn't even thrown a major league inning yet, already seeing his ceiling at least 10 degrees higher than than Rwanzi's ever was. Yeah. So, I I mean, I guess I don't want to clutch so tightly to somebody that performed 
decent for a year at this stage anymore. I don't think they can afford to. That's all I'm saying. So if they yeah. want to shove them in the pen for a month, fine. But it ain't going to last all year unless he starts contributing. No, it, it, it's one of, like I said to me, it's like a last gasp, buy a little bit more time. If they don't do it, Gary, I, it, even if it worked out somewhere else for him, I wouldn't begrudge them for it. Oh, I, I hope I, I it really works would. out for him too. I mean, yeah. I should say that. I hope it works out for him. The stuff is really good. I just wish that he could control it a little bit. And it seems like we've tried everything, but, you know, walking him up to the plate to like, <laughs> you know, have him actually yeah. get it over the plate. It, it's an issue that isn't going away. Right. And, and I think um, this is back. This is back to just the discussion at all. Uh, we, we had started to hear the, the, the talk that, well, the Pirates were pretty happy with some of the early reports they were getting from some of their pitchers in the offseason, or late reports maybe even. Well, you know, I would have hoped we would have seen just a bit more from people other than Contreras too, you know, like, so, and that that that's something I'll bring up a little later when we get our predictions in and that kind of stuff. Well, let's start the predictions then. Let's do who we think is going to be the best reliever this year. For me, it's it's still big boy from the Berg. I mean, to me, like until until he proves that he's on the downside, um, it's still for me. It's still Bednar. You would think it should be right. I mean, it really yeah. should be. I, I mean. I've had my mind changed a little bit on Ryan Barucki. I mean, I thought I thought for sure that kid was going to regress this year, but he doesn't look any different. He had one pretty shaky outing when I was down in Bradenton, oddly enough. So maybe just my presence forced it upon him. But um, <laughs> other than that, he's been pretty lights out. I think uh, my pick for the the best of the bullpen is probably going to be. David Bednar as well. You I know who I could, probably be fine. You know who I could throw in there, because just because uh, I've always been a fan, I think his stuff is disgusting. If he ever really just truly put it all together, is is Holderman? I, I mean, you know, help if he could just healthy. Look, he's already very good. Um, yeah. But but if he, there's actually more in there than what I think we've seen. I would agree with you, but. Um, He's a guy that also has struggled with control. I think has probably been one of his bigger issues. It's, if anything, his stuff sometimes is is too good. Yeah, it, it, uh, as far as control wise. And Ryan Lytle says, "Where is Majinski?" We talked about that in the opening segment a little bit. He's got forearm tightness, but he's actually throwing off the mound today, so he should be fine. Doing I think. I think. He if Ryan's suggesting, you know, why why wasn't he mentioned there? I think Majinski could be one of their best relievers. I, I, he's, he walks guys a little too much, um, but he's got the stuff too. Sure, and I'll, I'll give an outside shot to Chapman. I, I I think he could still come in and and do some pretty dam damaging things out of that bullpen. So I, I it, it's not like he has really lost anything. He's the fastball actually might have ticked up a little bit over the last couple of years, which is weird. Yeah, and I think this environment for him is actually going to be really good as far as you know the market. So I think he could be. I think he could have a a very good year. Right. All right. Let's do. Let's let's go with most home runs, Jim. Mm -hmm. This is probably pretty easy because I think we'll both say O'Neill Cruz, right? Well, it's hard not to right now, right? Right. I think, I think you just give him a full season. He's gonna, he's gonna hit his way to thirty. I, I I'm leaning like thirty-five or forty this year. Um, I think if anything, he'll figure out the home run a lot, a lot faster than he figures out everything else. You know, I, yeah. I, I think that that those home runs, some of them will come by accident on things that would have been just like pop outs for other people. You know, I think he'll 
he'll end up tucking them inside that left field fence and at PNC Park a little bit here and there and get some cheapies. And then, you know, he'll do his fair share of river walk too. So I, I think yeah. I think Cruz is probably the easy pick. Sawinski would be my second. I think he's got a good shot to hit 30 this year. Those are my, my two big ones. I'm not going to go with Rowdy. I know you want to. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm dying to go with Rowdy. I think he could hit 30 if he plays three years. But, um, no, I, I think it's got to be Cruz. I don't see anybody else in the lineup that you can say um, y- you can feel relatively comfortable could hit that 30 home run mark. All right, how about we do – this one's interesting. Highest average. Uh-huh. Okay, because you know we we talk about like the how how average isn't as important as it was. So it is a different type of hitter now that that hits for a decent average. And I should also say I want this to be someone that kind of qualifies. I don't want this to be someone that gets 250 at bats and and hits like 285. This has got to be someone that plays a decent amount of the season. So who would you go with for this one? You know, um, I was really tempted to go with uh, Triolo. Um, I think that as much as he wants to add more power to his game, I think he's a really good kind of uh, contact hitter and put the ball in play type guy. Yeah. But I'm not going to go with Triolo. I'm going to even surprise myself a little bit here. And I'm going to say it's Brian Hayes. I hey, think. you agree with Ted Jones here, average Hayes. Yeah, I, you know, even Hayes is somebody that I think could have a, look, 280 could do it uh, on this. <laughs> Brian team. says it won't be Rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, find, we'll find something for Rowdy to leave. You watch, alive. Rowdy's going to be an all-star because we've all just crapped on him all off. <laughs> wouldn't that be, wouldn't that, hey. I, I will I will be gladly gladly uh, uh, apologetic about that. Even when they re-sign him, uh, let's not go that far. <laughs> Who's yeah. your guy? Who's your I'm guy? going with Reynolds, and I'm in good company. James agrees with me. I think Brian Reynolds has the most consistent average that's up over that threshold where you start considering it acceptable on this team. You know, um. He's locked to finish over 260. I figure he can probably in a good year with somebody like Cruz hitting in front of him and someone like Hayes and, and Kutch and Sawinski right behind him. I think you're looking at a guy that's going to get better pitches to hit because they're going to want to face somebody that isn't necessarily going to knock him in the river right away, and he's going to be bookended by that. So I think – I think it's probably going to rise all tides, especially someone that knows what he's looking for. That's going to actually lead into another topic for me for the reason of some of your thinking there. Well, which um, one do you want it to be then? Um, my most surprising player for the Pirates this year. All right. Is Brian Reynolds. Okay. I think Brian Reynolds is going to have his best year in a Pirates uniform for some of the reasons you just said, Gary. I think this is the first time he's going to be hitting in a competent lineup. I think he's going to see better pitches to hit. I don't think he's going to be as easily uh, pitched around. Um, I think he's 29 and he's ready to have a big year. I think this is the year he is my guy. I think I have said for a couple of years, and I can't remember if you agreed or not, but I've said Brian Reynolds is one of those guys that he's going to perform better when he's not the one asked to, to lift the boat, you know, himself. When he's one of many rowers, I think he'll stand out. When he's the rower, I think you're probably going to lag behind the race a little bit. I think we've seen that. Uh, he's a good player, but I don't think he's a guy that can carry a team for, for real long stretches. So this, to me, the setup is going to suit him really, really well. I just think people are thinking, well, this is the Brian Reynolds we know. This is what he's capable of. I think you might see more this year. I think he might surprise you. 
All right, let's do most Ks, and let's do it both from the pitcher perspective and the hitter perspective, okay? All right. So the most Ks, you got to go with Keller, right? He just had, what, 200 or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, so he's by default. It's He's going to throw the most innings probably, So and he's going to strike guys out a lot. I, I don't think there's even competition for this unless – you get like a really early call up from like a Paul Skeens or Jared Jones, like we were talking about. Those two in particular probably are in that conversation. Now, as far as like the hitters, mm, I would hope not Cruz batting first. You know, I I would like to think that he's a little more patient. He's been showing that both this spring and in the nine games he played last year. Well, there'll so, be times where teams just will be willing to walk him. Yeah. Um, so I think I'd go with Jack. I think it's Jack. Um, um, by by nature of what we've seen, and if they're going to ask him to be every an everyday guy, I still think it's Jack. You take the good with the bad. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Did you? Would you agree with Keller too? Right. Yeah, I think by default, even if Keller missed part of the season because of something and threw 140 innings, I still think he might be the guy. Well, how about most Ks in the pen then? I'll go Chapman. Yeah, I'm trying to think about usage. Um, what, he got like 58 innings last year. He was devastating. Yeah, he it's, strikes it's, out two out of every three. Almost, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's probably still Chapman. Yeah, I think it's Chapman, uh, and I also think Chapman has a history of staying healthier than Bednar. So, I'll, I'll go with Chapman. I, I think he's probably the guy. And I would go with Holderman, Brandy, like you say. Except I think he'll he just walks too many guys to to be in that competition. Um, we'll that, see that. That would be my one. I I'm look. I'm a Holderman guy. I, I've always thought he his stuff should translate to more K's than it does. I don't know exactly why it doesn't, but um, uh, Brandy, I can I can see where you're going with that one. I just think he starts to nibble. I think that's that's another guy that probably just needs to learn that it's really cool you have all these tricks, but you do them all to get your ears and eyes. Yeah, you know. And sometimes so, I think he's got such movement on stuff he, he he's not intending to miss. Right. So. Who's going to be this team's rookie of the year? I mean, obviously we have like, you know, these guys who could get called up early on, right? You got Jared Jones, you got Paul Skeens. Those are options. As far as position player rookies, you can count Jared Triolo. I don't think you can count Peggy actually. Yeah. I, I was trying to think of that too. Cause to me, the obvious ones are either Jones or Skeens, depending on when. If Jones is up early, I will lean him. But I could see Skeens coming up and putting a big dent in things. Yeah, I, I would agree. I it, To me, if, if Jones gets the shot right out of camp, like we were talking about, yeah, I, I would think that he's got every possibility to be in that conversation. Um. But if they're even close, it's going to be really hard just to to not get caught on the Paul Skeens train. You know. Well, I mean? <laughs> yeah, and 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 Skeens is going to if and when Skeens does come up. Let's be honest; he probably has the ability to make up some ground just because of yeah. his his ability to maybe even pitch a little bit longer into games if he's if he's starting. You know, when he's starting. And I would say, barring injury. I don't see a world in which Jones and Skeens don't make it this year. So, I mean, I've seen some takes where they think like they're going to make Paul Skeens wait till next year. I really don't. I really, really don't. Uh, the only scenario I see in which that might happen is this rotation that we look at right now. And and hold your laughter until I get through the sentence. Everyone <laughs> performs so great that there's just no need to even consider calling up these kids. 
I mean, why would you when you're leading the division and, and this five man rotation you cobbled together is looking like you know the, the, the Braves on Braves. Yeah. Yeah, like why would well, you? How how excellent is that gonna happen? No. So like no. you know, Jones is gonna make it this year. He probably should have made it last year, and you're not gonna hold Skeens back. You're just not. Well, who's gonna tell he's him? He's ready, he's ready. You know, you know what clip I always remember of is you remember Mike Mussina, right? He was a he 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 was a great pitcher, and there was a there's a clip of him in a game, and Joe Torre of the Yankees starts to hop up out of the dugout to come take him out of the game, and Mike Mussina tells him to get back in the dugout. There are certain guys you don't say no to, or you you don't. They tell you sometimes. I think Skeens is going to be one of those guys where, go ahead, tell him he's not going to come up. And then I got Doug here. Heck, we need him now, like uh, with Skeens. No, you don't, Doug. You're you're supposed to be the spring training expert. You know what's going on down there. You know he ain't ready. You know why he ain't ready. We got to get on a major league schedule. You you can't just do that overnight. And again, he's only going to throw 150, 160 innings this year. This is not 162 games. Like you, you've got to like understand what what you're asking of somebody jumping straight from college to think they're going to go in and just throw a, a professional major league season. You got to give these guys a second. That's that, that's tough. Like I think a lot of people are discounting that jump, and a lot of people are discounting how crazy it would be. If if he actually did come up right out of camp, like that would be yeah. insane. Yeah, I mean, I just you know, the the greatest players in the game have. I can't even tell you. I give you an example of someone who's done that. Uh, so, um, give him a little bit of time. As much as we think he's ready, he could do it now. But don't you want to be extra careful with him just for a little bit? Don't you? It, isn't that the smart play? It is for me. I, I don't. It was never a question to me that I, I always yeah. thought that they would do this, and I actually think this is part of their plan too. You you almost see a dichotomy between Jones and and Skeens. Jones, they're ramping up early, talking about having him start right out of camp. You know, it's almost like we're going to burn this afterburner now, and then. Later in the season, we're going to go ahead and fire that second afterburner to get the rest of the way there. And Paul right. Skeens is that second afterburner. So we talk about like this, this controlling of the amount of innings. I think that those two are almost going to work together in a way to control each other's innings if they play this right. And if everybody's healthy, mind you. Yeah, and th this is the thing, too, is, like, I'm looking at this just to see because I'm curious. Um, I want to see what Steven Stra Strasburg did um, when they first got him up. Because if you remember even that one year, they shut him down before the playoffs started. Yeah. They decided he had had enough innings. Um, Stra Strasburg was in the minors and got a decent amount of action before he was up. So it, this is not weird folks. It's just not. Yeah. In fact, I think it will be weird when he gets caught up because it's going to be very early. And uh, in comparison to other guys, it really is. And I mean, the team's talking that way too. It's not like, it's not like I'm just guessing here. They, they're not making any bones about the fact that he's very likely coming up this year. Um, something here I wanted to talk about. Um, Ryan yeah, what Lytle. else we got? Brian Lytle says, I uh, still can't believe Lorenzen got four and a half million and we didn't bring him in. Um, yeah, I mean, this is one of those things that I kind of heard about a long time ago, but it's not really reportable, you know what I mean? And and minds change and everything. But I had heard a while ago, they just don't like him. For whatever reason, they just don't think that what he does is going to translate here. And when a team feels that way, it's very hard to convince them otherwise you know I, I, that that's a fine price tag for him in fact it's way cheaper than i thought it would be 
And I would prefer taking a swing on him versus some of the other guys that they've brought in here. But definitely, I, it's hard because you look at it and you go, "Okay, a guy had an ERA in the low fours. He threw 150 innings. Isn't yeah, that exactly? Then, isn't that exactly what you're looking for?" Yeah, but Brandy says sometimes players don't want to come here either. People don't get that. Very true. Not in this case. Renzen wanted to play here. He's a huge Roberto fan. He would have loved to have been here. That the team just was not interested. I, I mean, well, I, I know on top, <laughs> on top of it, and on top of it, I mean, it's March twentieth when he signed. Um, maybe that tells you something that not. I mean, no one was beating down his door. It's yeah. just from an just from an innings pitch type scenario. I, I just, man, that sucks because that's exactly what we're trying to talk about, which is guys, you know, somebody that can cover innings. It is. But then you're talking about like, you feel pretty undeniable that Jones is ready, right? Uh, I think he's earned the shot. I think he, I think he's as ready. Oh, don't hedge your bet for once, man. Like you feel uh, like he's ready. Yeah, right? I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do, do. Right. So maybe we don't need another Michael Lorenzen type. Maybe Eric Lauer is enough and Chase Anderson and Germán and this laundry list of other like half veterans they brought in is enough of that stuff when you really think some of these youngsters are ready. Like, let's not hold them back. Let's win with what we got. If Jared Jones is ready, let's do it. Like, that's all I ask. If you don't bring in these guys, well, give me the alternative that's better. I think that's Jones. I think that's what you owe us. When you don't go out and get those free agents that we think need to come in to fill in the gap, at least give us what you think you don't need them for. And that's these talented kids. That's not Willie Peralta. That's not Chase Anderson. That's not Bailey Falter. That's these kids. That's what I want to see. Fill those holes. That's the only acceptable reason to not go get somebody like Lorenz and or um Montgomery or somebody like that. If you're trying to win, you think you can win with what you have. Let's play with what you have. Then it is very strange. The more I think about it with Lorenzen is that he was sitting there. I think he, uh, and this was a quick glance I had at the time. I think he threw close to 150 innings. I think he had a low four ERA. I think he had a whip in the one twos. Um, that's a weird dude to be sitting out there for that kind of money. It really there's is. Something, there's something going on then, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a stra- It's strange. It's not just that he wanted two years either. Something going on. There's something that people don't like. There's something that people saw that they that that spooked a bunch of people off. You know, I, that, there has to be something like that. Let's take another break. Come back and let's talk about some of these wider stroke things that we have because we want to get out on time today again at dk pittsburgh sports we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams now that connection stronger than ever introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app find expert inside reporting and original podcasts check live box scores track the latest stats chat it up with our community of thousands of fans all in one place the new app from dk pittsburgh sports coverage that connects all right and wilbert's got a question he just wanted us to talk about the 40 man real quick does falter make it i hope not grandall can go um grandall they claim is going to start running next week plantar fasciitis is no joke so i wouldn't be shocked to see him start on the 10-day il I really see no reason not to start him on the 10-day IL. I think Henry's pretty clearly won that starting job, at least as far as I'm concerned. They may stubbornly decide to start Jason DeLay on opening day and make Doug Smith happy, and, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, maybe that's that would be for Keller, but Keller hasn't seemed to have trouble throwing to, to Henry either. I don't know. I think I'd rather them just not play games and just start Henry – let Grandall get okay. Maybe you need a misfortification later on. It can't hurt, right? So yeah. uh, I'd start out I would with take, delay personally. I would too. Um, we know what delay can do. Um, 
who's to say Grandal is even much better at this point? We don't know. Right. And I haven't seen anything from um, Peralta or Anderson to say that they shouldn't make the team. If they decided to take either of them, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. I think they're both good players. I think they they both have something to give. Um, they're both bullpen options. I don't see either of them as starters. Um, maybe Chase Anderson sees himself as one, but he's never been anywhere that he's ever been. So I just, I just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put a lot of cookies in that basket. I just don't think he's gonna make it as a starter. So I'm not, I'm not entirely worried about that. And his opt out date here is the 23rd they probably already know what they're doing there. (laughs) Yeah. And if Anderson had looked anywhere decent the last three or four years in major league baseball, when he's gotten opportunities, I would, I would care. Yeah. But he just, he just hasn't. And um, Peralta has actually shown to be pretty valuable. He's always getting these chances and finds his way to be useful. Yeah, and uh, Todd, he says, is Henry going to be on the opening day roster? Haven't seen anything clearly because (laughs) there's nothing you would have seen that would have led you to believe he's not going to be. And um, he's absolutely going to be. He should be the starter. There's no benefit to the Pirates to not start him in the major leagues. It doesn't make any sense to not. Yeah, um, I've never really understood how that conversation got where it got, except for some reporters taking the bait and knowing that they had easy, angry clicks if they started saying it. And I'm sorry to be that jaded about it, but that's the only reason to bring up something so patently stupid. He was always yeah. going to make the team. Even if yeah, he couldn't I- catch, he was always going to make the team. I I think um, people started trying to read into comments way too much, which with the Pirates, sometimes you do have a tendency to do. Um, yeah. But yes, with him, I agree. All right, let's do it. NL Central final standings. Holy crap, Gary. Yeah. This is hard. I, I'll go first honestly, if you want, because I have thought about this quite a bit. Yeah, dude, I, you can go first, but I will just say that I think I could – do a different one every day of the week. For I think I could too, and and I'm obviously not going to beat you over the head about it if you're wrong, vice versa. Mm. This is just for fun. This is this is a this is a brutally tough division to call. I'm going to go from bottom up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Last, the Cardinals. <laughs> this I, is awesome. I believe I believe the Cardinals' devil magic is over. I think their their best players are over the hill their best pitcher just got hurt and the other pitchers they brought in were crap i think the cardinals are the worst team in the division and i don't think it's particularly close the top four teams i see being separated by no more than six or eight games from top to bottom (laughs) like from who's first and who's fourth and i'll i'll go in order i'll go cubbies first Pirates second, Milwaukee third, Reds fourth. Reds just have taken on way too many big injuries here early on, and they don't have the backing of any more youngsters coming. All their youngsters are here. They've got another wave, but it's another year away. So they, to me, they don't have a cavalry coming, and they didn't sign enough to, to really back themselves out of it. I think they're fourth. Pirates are second to me. And and don't get hung up on like, oh my goodness, they're second. Keep in mind, I said from first to fourth, I think there's like six to eight games separating them. Top uh, oh, them. oh, I think 84 games might win you the division. Well, we're going to do record predictions next. But how do you see the pecking order of the NL Central? All right. So I'll go, I'll go top to bottom. Um, and I'll be the first to say that I'm I'm not in love with any of my picks because I just don't know. No one does. I've got the Cubs winning the division. Um, by default, really. Um, I think Bellinger getting him back was huge. So that's where I'll I'll stick there. Um, I still have the Cardinals at number two. I think in a division where yes, they're old, a lot of veterans. Um, 
but I don't think I think they'll be better than last year, and I still think that they'll be somewhere in and around 500, maybe a little under. I think one team in this division might be above 500. Uh, I've got the Pirates at number three. I've got the Brewers at fourth. Man, that uh, Devin Williams uh, injury just killed them. I um, think he's out for what? Oh, man, I forget how long, how many weeks it was, but it's he's out for a while. Long enough. Yeah. Yeah. And the Reds, I have them bottoming out. I think they've had some really tough injury breaks. And um, I think they're going to take a step back this year. Yeah. I mean, you could probably predict just about anything. I feel really strongly about the Cardinals. That's our only real disagreement. I feel really strongly they're the worst team in this division. I actually think we could have four teams over 500 in this division. Um, Cardinals being the only one I don't see making it. I just think their pitching is way too thin. They got nothing backing it at all. They're not going to go by anymore, and what they have stinks. So to me, I I really see them as being down this year. And uh, while I think Arenado and Goldschmidt will still play well, their their superstar years are behind them. They still have some juice, yeah. But I mean, is is well, Goldschmidt... you're you're talking about year three of Jordan Walker. Is he going to take off finally? He's a big Burleson finally going to take a step. You know, yeah. they they've got a lot of of guys like that. It's it's time for them to put up or shut up. You know, with with some of those prospects, and we'll see what happens. Like they they've suffered injuries too. Newt Bar's hurt again. You know, <laughs> like they just lost their big. You know, um, Sonny Gray, their big signing. Without that, I mean, you got Miles Michaelis asked to carry the weight of of that rotation, and yeah, I honestly, no. I'd take the Pirates' current rotation over the the St. Louis Cardinals. I would. It's it's. I am totally relying on their ability to milk something out of your devil of magic. magic. Yeah. I think their devil magic's over. I think. And I also think here's their biggest problem, and you're going to laugh at me. Contreras is is absolute pitcher poison. He he's the worst catcher in the league, I think, as far as manning a staff. And signing him, he's the anti Yachty. I I kind of still don't understand why they did it. Yeah, I'm no get fan further of, away from Yachty than him. I'm no fan of Wilson Contreras. That's for sure. Nope. You want William? Cool. <laughs> William's good. <laughs> you know. And maybe they'll do that. Maybe they'll end up trading for Milwaukee when they have their fire sale. But <laughs> yeah, L- look, um, I think the Brewers, they've lost too much on the pitching side of things. Um, I don't think that Hoskins moves the needle for them uh, enough. Yelich, as much as you like him, Gary, as much as I like him, um, I don't see him returning to any kind of a form that he once was. So. Um, the Cubs for me are almost by default. Yeah. I also think so. the way I have it going in my head, I think that the pirates will get stronger as the season goes on internally. I really do think like you will see Jones and Skeens, And I think there's some other Ashcraft's going to come up and probably have an impact. Uh, Brew Baker's coming back. You know, you're gonna have Burroughs probably working his way into the into the conversation as far as getting some time up here. That's a lot of pitching they have to back to lean back on. And a lot of these NRIs have pretty late opt outs or no opt outs at all. So they're gonna be around too. You've got a lot of depth. I think a lot more depth than everybody else in the division. Sometimes when everybody's gonna be relatively mediocre. The team that can survive their injuries the best is probably in the best position. That's why I moved the Pirates up so so high. I could almost see them floating around the middle of the division and then at the end of the season making a real push to chase down the Cubs and then fin- finally not make it. That's how I see this kind of heading. And that's why I so, have them in second. So what do, what do you have them record-wise? Um... I have them winning 84 games. Okay. I think I think they can achieve 84. So I don't think that's too much of an a, of an ask. It's certainly not asking for another 16 game jump. I don't think that's going to happen. But I I think that achieves what the Pirates set out to do. 
They said they would compete for the division. They said they would compete for a wild card. I think 84 gets that done. Okay. Um, I, I'll i tell you, again, this was a tough one for me, too, because, you know, um, look, the things you want to see out of a lot of this team for the spring, you, you have seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but my biggest concern is um, the starting pitching. And until I feel more comfortable with that, I have them at 80 and 82. I still think that could get you third place in this division. Um, If I felt more comfortable about the starting pitching, I would probably be willing to go a little higher. So I don't feel comfortable early on about the starting pitching. I guess I really see it as an, as a living organism. I think, I think Keller's going to be the studying force. I think he'll be fine. I think Martin Perez looks better than I thought he would. Marco Gonzalez looks a little worse than I thought he would. That probably averages out for me. Kind of creates one pitcher. I think I expect to get something out of Skeens and Jones. I expect to get something out of Priester. I expect to get something out of Ortiz. I can see myself getting something out of two or three of these NRIs potentially. And I think Brubaker will, will probably have an impact greater than most of us think because he's healthier than most of us think right now. I think he's actually going to be ready in June. So, Yeah, I mean, who knows? He, <clears throat> I don't – I know you're not counting on him. I'm not I, – when I say this, but, like, I don't like to count on someone like that just because I think there are – peaks and valleys with that or a step forward and then you take a step and a half back type deal. I'm counting on getting some kind of a contribution from a number of people and I think I'll get it. And I think that the rotation will be a lot stronger looking at the end of the season than it is at the beginning. It's maybe a living organism. And if they're in it, they've got a lot more collateral than a lot of these other teams to make moves to get help. Well, I was actually going to mention that I do think the trade trade deadline in this division could be interesting Um, because somebody, if not multiple teams are going to be sniffing around um, thinking about the playoffs. And um, I do think you've got a couple teams in position, one being the pirates that actually has some room and some depth with which to deal from. I'm talking about like the Cardinals finishing last, and part of that is because I think they might trade Goldschmidt if if they're not in it, you know, come deadline time. He's a guy that's probably got to be somebody they're thinking about shipping. So they're in a weird spot. The, the best thing in the world would be if the Pirates got him, <laughs> like at the oh deadline <laughs> to be their first uh. baseman. Man. That would be so great. I, I think I would love that actually. So oh. let's start riding that hype train right now. Let's be like, <laughs> cool. let's be like Cardinals. Listen, you want Rowanzi. You really do. So like <laughs> you you love Rowanzi. Don't you don't you want another Contreras that's a that's a big problem and maybe Yeah, absolutely. Case? Absolutely. They can he can be their third brother. It'll right. Work out just fine. <laughs> we promise it'll work out just fine. But I think it's it's going to be a, a weird, wild division this year, and and health is going to play probably maybe the biggest factor of all, behind, besides the talent, whoever is healthiest. Well, this was a fun show, Jim. I, yeah. I like doing this sort of stuff. We don't do it often enough. We tend to like try to avoid being prediction artists and whatnot, but you have to do it before the season starts. And when, when better than when you're optimistic and happy, right? Well, hey, you know, you got this is this is if you want to challenge yourself, this is the year to do it. The Pirates have a ton of what ifs. The division does. Players were expecting to maybe take jumps. So um, this could either we could either look like geniuses or l- that we know nothing about baseball here. Uh, Tristan here's got months. yes hashtag Goldie at the deadline. I love it. And Perfect. this is a dude we are getting on this show by the way. Tristan, come hell or high water, I talked to him down at spring training. Craig and I ran into him outside of uh, Cork and Barrel. We ended up talking for like 25 minutes. My wife comes out like, 
you know, like because she's sitting at the bar waiting for us. And I'm like, uh oh. But we got to get him on. He's really fun to talk to, and he'll hold his own, Jim. It'll be good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. No, this is this was a fun show. So next week, everybody, don't forget nine o'clock. We're gonna do a special time. It'll be after opening day, you know. So. Yeah, it's going to be a post game. No, we're not competing with North Star Nine. No, we're not sponsored by Permanente Brothers. We're gonna... <laughs> but yeah, well, there's we're room be for doing everybody. our normal show and, and probably have a little bit more of this season outlook type stuff because we'll have more decisions that have been made and it'll be a little more clear what we're talking about, right? Yeah, I mean, at least we'll have we'll we'll be able to talk about the decisions they did make and um, we'll talk about the game a little bit and. Um, Maybe even how the first part of the season is setting up, you know, schedule-wise, too. All right, everybody. Let's end it the way we always do. Our buddy, Ben. Let's go, Buck! Yeah, buddy. Thanks, everyone.